All right, everyone, this is again Frank DeMora with giving you some more information uh, concerning prophecy as it relates to current events. And I promise you I will do my best to talk slow. I know that I get excited when I talk about prophecy and about the signs of the Lord Jesus Christ coming back soon. But I'm going to do my best to slow myself down so that you understand completely uh, and with no problems at all what is happening and I believe that you're going to see it coming together as I see it coming together um, and when I say that I mean I'm just pointing out the scriptures and uh, as we both see how the Lord's words are actually coming to play coming to pass now I'm going to be dealing with Ezekiel chapter 38 uh, for the most part of my videos today I've been talking about Psalm 83 concerning what's going on in the Gaza Strip and how Israel is attacking now uh, the Palestinians in the Gaza Strip trying to stop those rockets and the mortars from coming over the border. But there's definitely things through these current events that are shaping up that are also leading to the next war which would be the Ezekiel chapter 38 war and you'll find that in Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39 those very specific details about the completion of that war and what's going to happen where they come from the enemies how they attack uh, what direction how many people live in that war it's going to be amazing war and every one of the uh, war warnings made by the Lord will be coming to pass just as we see now the uh, formation of the Psalm 83 war so here let it be known that we see Russia as a major player in this war. They will be leading the Magog war against Israel, Iran, uh, very, very close allies with them. As a matter of fact, all of these nations are now close allies with Russia. And I'm going to show you a little bit more here. But let's go right in and to Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 13. And I'm going to connect the dots for you. You'll understand why. And of course, this is the King James Version. Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish with all the young lions thereof shall say unto thee, Thou art come to take a spoil? In other words, they see this massive army coming, led by Russia. And there's going to be millions and millions of these Islamic soldiers who will be pouring in, or at least trying to get into Israel. And so Sheba and Dedan, as you're going to be seeing down here a little bit later, I'm going to tell you exactly who they are. But let me just finish what it says. As Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish, with all the young lions thereof, shall say unto thee, that thou art come to take a spoil. Thou hast gathered thy company to take a prey, and to carry away the silver and the gold, and to take away cattle and goods, and to take a great spoil. So, obviously, all of these massive armies are coming in to rid Israel, and to take everything Israel has whether it be their gold, their silver, their, co their cattle, their agricultural fields, the, whatever they have, they want to go in and take it away and destroy Israel once and for all. So who is Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish and how does that fit in with the current news today? You're going to see it. Now in my book you're going to find a page that looks just like this. This is the chapter on the coming attack on Israel. And of course, you can download it at my site for free. Uh, today, as a matter of fact, you'll just go right to my top of my web page, which you'll see right here, BibleProphecyMan.com, and you'll see this link. Just click that link, and you'll get the brand new edition of the book. But in this book, in this chapter, I say this. In May of 2012, the U.S. and Saudi Arabia were taking, or, or taking part in a military exercise that when I saw the name of this exercise, I could, I could hear the Lord say, If you are watching, I will show you. Now let me show you what the Lord was pointing out to me. In Ezekiel chapter 38, verses 13, tells us this. And I just added the flags, obviously. But I wanted to make it very plain and simple who the Lord is talking about when he's talking about Tarshish and Sheba and Dedan and the rest of them. So Great Britain, which is Tarshish of the Old Testament, and is known as the Lion, and if uh, you don't believe that, just Google the coat of arms for Great Britain and you'll see that it's a lion. 
the United States, Canada, and Australia, which are the young lions that we see in the scriptures up here. And you'll, you'll notice it says, and all the young lions. Right? So that's very plain, very easy to understand. And Australia with all the young lions uh, as break off of the main lion, which would be the break off of Great Britain, which that's exactly what happened. Uh, the United States obviously was born from the uh, taxation and the suppression by uh, Great Britain. And so we have three new young lions, if you will, that separated themselves from the main lion, Great Britain, and here they go, United States, Canada, and Australia. Now Sheba and Dedan, as we see in the scripture here, very simply, uh, as it goes on here, let me continue on. It says the young lions, a break off of the main lion. Tarshish are in the area, and here's the flag, Saudi Arabia, which is known as Sheba in Dedan at the time of the attack against Israel breaks out. All right, so very, very clearly we see who the nations are. Uh, not You don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand this. Now, What's so important about this? Well, let's go in. I want to show you an article that just came out and keep the names that I just gave to you because they're going to be really important when it's coming together for Ezekiel chapter 38. So with that, let me go to my first report today and you're going to see, look, look what we have here. Canada throws unwavering support behind Israel in the Gaza war. The government of the, the, candidate, the Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper once again demonstrated his unwavering support of Israel on Thursday when it is unequivocally backed the Jewish state's military response to incessant terrorist uh, uh, rocket fire. We fundamentally believe that Israel has the right to defend itself and its citizens from terrorist threats. And this stated the Canadian Foreign Minister John Beard. Far too often the Jewish people find themselves on the front lines in a struggle against terrorism, the greatest struggle of our generation, and there's no doubt about that. Referring to hundreds of terrorist rockets that sparked Israel's Operation Pillar of, Pillar of Cloud. And of course, uh, even uh, today I was in a... I listened to a conference call with David Siegel, the Council General of Israel, and he even pointed out that this operation was named, uh, if people read the Old Testament, how God protected the people, his Jewish nation that was exiting from Egypt. And uh, there was a pillar there of a uh, cloud that was you know, helping them and providing for them or keeping them safe. And so this is what they named this operation after. So anyway, it says the provocation must, most of the world has suddenly uh, forgotten about Beard, said in the Canadian, or Canada condemns the terrorist group Hamas and stands with Israel, get rid of this, stands with Israel as it deals with the regional threats of peace and security. Now, here we go again. Look at the, check this out. You see this right here? When is the war supposed to happen? according to what Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3. If you read that in your Bible, you're going to see the sudden destruction will come when they say peace and safety. And we're starting to see this, this phrase, peace and safety, on a regular basis. I've quoted about this many, many times, and here we go again. And uh, so it all goes hand in hand what we see in the Scripture. So bottom line is you have Canada, who is supporting Israel, they're behind Israel. And let's go back and now look at this one. So this is an article that talks about the news that just came out from the Australian, world takes size to tit for tat attacks. And of course, this is today's date. And uh, it's talking about what's going on in Israel right now. It says, Iran and Egypt. Its new Islamic leaders under pressure to build closer ties with the Palestinians at the cost of 30, a 30-year 30 peace deal with the Jewish state led to angry protest against strikes that left at least 15 dead. Now, Egypt is involved in the Psalm 83 war. Iran is involved in the Ezekiel war. 
It says the Israelis must understand that we do not accept this aggression which can only be led to instability in the region. Of course, this is coming from the Egyptian president, Mohamed Marsi, who, who was there now in, uh, in the region where the attacks are taking place. So we have another one of these men, the leader of Egypt has taken sides, and we know that those sides are going exactly where the Lord showed us from the Psalm 83 war. Now going to Iran, okay, check this out. Acu Iran, accused by Israel of being the Gaza militant's main supplier of the rocket power, branded the Israeli strike as the organized terrorism conducted by criminal Zionist is Israeli uh, military forces. Tehran called on the United Nations and the European Union to halt the barbaric offensive against the Gaza Strip. And of course, everybody knows now that Israel has been faced with 700 rockets. Uh, as I pointed out in my first video today, David Siegel, the Consul General, pointed out that Israel's been hit every hour with 20 missiles. And just in the last three days, they've had uh, six, 600 missiles fall on them. So let's move down a little bit because it's going to show you who's taking sides or what. And this is the most important part. Get this right here. It says an emergency UN meeting concluded Wednesday without a decision and clear signals on the concern over the first escalation of the Middle East violence since 2011. Arab Spring altered the political map of the history of volatile region. Of course, everybody should know now that all those nations went into turmoil and most of those nations were given over to leaders who hate Israel. Now here we go, Russia again who is the leader of the Magog War. All right, keep that in mind. The Russian president, Vladimir Putin, urged both sides, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and the Palestinians to avoid escalating the violence as Moscow worried about the fighting spreading to other regions of the volatile Arab world. And of course, I believe that if it doesn't happen now where it's gonna spread, it will shortly because that's how the Psalm 83 war uh, goes into fruition. Now, the president of Russia called on the parties to exercise restraint and avoid the path of escalating violence, whose victims include citizens, and and to do everything to return the situation to its normal course. The Kremlin said following a television, or excuse me, a telephone conversation between Mr. Putin and Mr. Netanyahu. Now, both Moscow also get this, but Moscow also criticized the disproportionate strikes on Gaza while calling for cooler heads. Now, of course, he's saying disproportionate, but let, let me tell you something. After listening what Davos Siegel said today, the Council General of Israel, who's right now in Los Angeles, Israel was very, very restrained in attacking the Gazans. They waited for almost 700 of these missiles to go before they moved in on the Gaza. So, you know, what, what the president of Moscow has said, disproportionate, he's way out of line on this case because anybody else uh, would have attacked their aggressor. And I know if, say, for example, the United States threw uh, five missiles at his country, you better believe that the president of Moscow would launch missiles on the United States. So this is just uh, rhetoric that he's talking about. But take a look at this. Moscow's reaction openly clashed. Understand that? Very important. It clashed with who? Understanding approaches of Israel's a position adopted by, guess what? Great Britain, there you go, and the United States. Are you beginning, let me go back here now, are you beginning to understand the United States, Great Britain, right? We just showed you that Canada is in there and uh, they're not the only ones. You're gonna see that Australia is also in there. So let's go back to this article again, pointing these things out to you. Washington, meanwhile, rose to the Jewish state's defense despite earlier signs of strains in relations between the US President Barack Obama and the conservative Mr. Netanyahu, expressing regret for the victims on both sides of the conflict. White House spokesman Jay Carney 
said that there was no justification for the violence on the part of the Hamas, saying it does nothing to help the Palestinians. Now, the U.S. State Department spokesman Mark Turner said in a statement, we support Israel's right to defend itself and we encourage Israel to continue to take every effort to avoid citizen casualties. Now, the United States is also calling on Egypt to use its sway with the Palestinians to try to end the violence from the Gaza. And let me assure you, that's not going to happen because Marcy is referred to Israel as his number one enemy now. So going on, Julia Gustard said, here we go. Look at this, said Australian government was gravely concerned, concerned by the escalating conflict and urged both Hamas and Israel to exercise restraint. The prime minister condemned the Hamas rocket and mortar attacks on the southern Israel saying that they do not serve the interest of the Palestinian people or push for statehood. Get this, Australia's support supports Israel right to defend itself against any or against these indiscriminate attacks. This Mrs. Gerard said, such attacks on Israel's citizens pop population are utterly unacceptable. And so the British, for the Foreign Secretary William Haig, said Hamas bears principal responsibility for the surge in the Gaza violence and accused the Shiite group of creating an intolerable situa situation in the south of Israel where the rockets were falling. So do you understand what is going on here? You have the Australians, you have the United States, you have, you have the British, and every one of these things, as you can see, have been listed already. So do you think really now, do you really think that the road is not being paid for the Ezekiel war to come into fruition? It most certainly is, and it's not a coincidence that the very names of these people the very countries that the Lord had pointed out in Revelation or in the Ezekiel prophecy, uh, they're coming with uh, with the Israelis right now and supporting. And on the contrary to that, on the other side of the flip note, the nations who are listed in the Ezekiel to attack Israel have come against Israel and are supporting the PLO. And all I can say with this is. Take this information and digest what the Lord Jesus Christ has given to you today because it's truth. The word of the Lord is opening it up to us. We're seeing the last day's events coming to play just before the Lord Jesus Christ comes back and takes his church home. The question is, are you part of that church? If you're not, and I'm not talking about a building. I'm not talking about any kind of building whatsoever. I'm talking about the relationship with Jesus Christ. You must be born again in Christ Jesus. And so let me close with this, what the Lord said in John 14, 6, because this is what Jesus said. I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. So either you're going to be with Christ and be taken away to heaven at the rapture, or you're going to be left behind because you refuse to receive Jesus, the one who loves you, the one who's given you all this information, so that you will know that the blessed Messiah is coming for you and me. I'm hoping that my ministry will bless you, and if you have any questions, feel free to email me, and that would be at fjdemora at gmail.com, and there's the, the name right there, so it's very easy. That's fjdemora at gmail.com. God bless you all.